Peter, welcome. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Thanks for visiting with us, Stephanie. Well, I want to talk really about global markets and the economy, whether we're talking about Fed intervention here, the ECB in Europe, or what's happening in Asia. Are the markets simply addicted to central banking intervention? Right now they are, for sure, and likely to stay that way for quite a while. We're living in the most interesting financial experiment um, the world's ever seen in, in its industrialized state. And it is an experiment, and nobody knows exactly how it's going to come out between our central bank, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, um, the Central Bank of China. Um, money is being printed at an extraordinary rate to keep the economies in these countries from imploding, you know, or deflating. But is there real organic growth under that? We see when the Fed interve intervenes, the market moves higher, people seem to buy it, but fundamentally, is there real organic growth around the world? Inflation adjusted, probably not. And that's the conundrum that the central banks have. You know, try to get these economies moving forward. And it's very, very hard uh, to see how that's going to happen, frankly. When you look back on your decades in the industry, is there anything you can draw from your experiences to know how to invest around these markets, not knowing what the central banks are going to well, do? Well, we've never, we've never been in a situation like this before. Uh, we've had periods of dislocation, but you could see through them. This is, this is a little bit more opaque. This is difficult to see where, where, how we get out of this tunnel. But I would say that people who are so starved for yield and income um, and protection, because intuitively people know this money printing is not a good thing, the only thing you can think about is owning a business. Now, most people can't just own a business. So you can own businesses through the stock market. Since 2008, that, that mindset hasn't quite been here. Um, but I think it's coming back now as people realize that the way to protect yourself is to own equities in sustainable growth companies or just sustainable uh, consumer companies of, of any kind that will be around regardless of the economic landscape. But these companies are doing so little. They're sitting on mountains of cash as they wait for us to get through the fiscal cliff, get through the debt ceiling. We're seeing CEOs write desperate letters to Washington. What do we need to do to get these CEOs to start doing more, to give more confidence to the equity markets? Because even if we say buy equities, if you actually look at the volumes, nobody's buying enough of them yet. No, they're not. They're sitting on cash because they don't have anything to do with the cash. Uh, corporate CEOs, you know, are very wily people. If there's something to, to do, if they can invest that money and see the right return, they're going to invest it. They just don't see what to do with it. You see the jobs numbers today. Unemployment is stuck. Even though we added jobs, we're adding people to the labor force every single month, probably 300,000 a month. So the unemployment rate, to me, is a very structural problem. All the wonderful effects of technology, um, all the productivity that Chairman Greenspan used to talk about uh, when he would report on, on, on his Fed numbers. You know, the, the flip side of that is it's displaced workers, not just here, Japan, Korea, China, Europe. So the other side of technology is permanent structural unemployment. There are a lot of jobs in this country. People aren't trained for them. Now, what do they need to do to get trained for them? They need to go back to technical school, trade schools. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's very sophisticated whether it's electricians, plumbers, you know, or welders, very sophisticated welders, computer programmers. One of the problems is we have a policy in our higher education system. We have all these, these very talented, wonderful foreign students who come here, get their undergraduate degree, their masters, their, their PhDs, and then we make them go home. We should be keeping them here um, and making them part of the economic landscape of the United States, which made this country great to begin with.